By now, you know how to craft precise prompts, which is primarily great communication. But doing it every time you need to get something done can get tiresome. Fortunately, just like expensive material, prompts can be recycled. If you're using an LLM regularly, you'll quickly notice that certain prompts become your go-to tools. Whether it's summarizing reports, drafting emails, or structuring data, reusing well-crafted prompts can save you an absurd amount of time. So let's talk about getting the LLMs to actually do what you want every time. By that, I mean making their outputs more robust and reliable. But there's just a small hiccup. LLMs aren't as predictable as a spreadsheet formula. And if you've seen the other videos, you know that I'm repeating myself. This is just because it's worth saying again. Just because a prompt works well on one task doesn't mean it's reliable across all variations of that task. Human professionals adjust instinctively when edge cases arise, but LLMs, not so much. Don't get overconfident in their abilities to extrapolate. As we said in previous videos, they cannot do that very well. When working with chatbots like ChatGPT or Claude, simply writing a great initial prompt is rarely enough. Prompts yield variable responses even to exactly the same requests due to the inherent statistical fluctuations in LLM behavior. This variability isn't a flaw, rather it stems from how LLMs probabilistically interpret input and generate responses influenced by subtle internal parameters. One day, you might get a perfectly structured response, and the next, something completely off. And when models get updated or you switch to a different one, prompts that used to work might suddenly start producing unexpected results. Just like trying to use the same detailed step-by-step -step prompt you've been using with gpt 4 but on O1 or O3, which are the reasoning models. While they may work, they are far from optimal due to how these new reasoning models were trained and behave. This constant model evolution is why you need a structured way to test, refine, and evaluate prompts, especially if you are using them on a larger scale. And that's exactly what we will cover today. The simplest way to improve a prompt is to experiment, try variations, and compare results. But you don't want to rely on gut instinct alone, or what we call vibe check. A more structured approach is extremely useful, especially for ongoing long-term projects. For example, A-B testing is a great way to compare prompts directly. Take two versions of a prompt, feed them to an LLM, and see which one performs better in terms of accuracy, clarity, and completeness. You can also run the same prompt through different models to figure out which one handles your task best. Since AI models update frequently, you also need to revisit critical prompts regularly. A prompt that worked last month might degrade after an update, so scheduling periodic reviews, say monthly, ensures your best prompts remain reliable. Likewise, if the response isn't ideal, you can simply edit the prompt you sent inside the chatbot UI and resend it until you get better responses to improve your prompt directly instead of continuing the discussion. And then, once you start recycling your prompts for repeatable tasks, a good enough prompt won't cut it you'll always end up in the same loops with the model to finally get what you want. I've been there, and it's worth taking just a bit more time editing it so that you have a robust prompt. Such a robust prompt doesn't just ask for a result. It anticipates potential mistakes. It specifies things like output structure and other requirements like table headers, formats, and any hard or soft rules the model should follow. The goal is to reduce variability and make responses more predictable across different but similar tasks. But the truth is that even improved prompts can fail when encountering new edge cases. A small tweak might fix one issue while creating a new one elsewhere. That's why systemic testing is crucial compared to only vibe checking the results. Instead of making random adjustments, evaluate how a revised prompt performs across a range of realistic scenarios. Your industry expertise is key here. Identify tricky cases where the LLM might struggle and make sure your prompt holds up. Each iteration should solve a problem without creating new ones. Here's the not so fun part. Manually testing generated responses at scale can get exhausting fast. But guess what? You can use another LLM to do the heavy lifting for you here again. This method, called LLM as a judge, lets one model score another's outputs based on predefined criteria. For example, if you are using AI to draft client emails, you can ask a different model to evaluate the draft based on clarity, professionalism, accuracy, and completeness. 
For example, let's say we receive a client email draft from ChatGPT, then pass it to Cloud. We could ask the model to check it with a prompt like this. Cloud might then respond with scores and critiques like these. That's often more useful than just eyeballing it yourself. This feedback also guides a targeted prompt refinement to improve completeness and tone. However, this isn't foolproof. If both models share similar blind spots or biases, they might overlook the same errors or misjudge certain details. Their feedback can also shift when updated, so you can't rely entirely on them. A human reviewer is still crucial, especially where the stakes are high. Let LLMs lighten your workload, but don't leave them in charge blindly. Taking LLM as judge one step further, AI models aren't just useful for evaluations. They can also work together to refine outputs through iterative constructive feedback. Instead of relying on one as the final judge, you can have multiple models critique each other outputs, creating a feedback loop that sharpens results. Just be sure to tell the model to be critical, otherwise it could give your output a glowing review just to please you. Cross-model feedback works because each LLM has its quirks. One might be detail-obsessed, another might excel at clarity, and a third could be a master of structure. And the best thing is that all these models have free tiers to use, and you can do all that without coding anything. Tossing work between them is like an AI-powered peer review system. Say you draft something with ChatGPT, You send it to Cloud, instructing it to nitpick structure, flag omissions, and call out inconsistencies. Cloud obliges, returning a breakdown, sometimes a few bullet points, sometimes a whole essay. And then hand that feedback back to ChatGPT, constructing it to revise accordingly. Repeat as needed. Here, every revision isn't just about improving the output in the moment. It's also about learning lessons for refining your prompts for future tasks. The more you fine-tune and semi-automate your testing process, the more prompting turns into an ongoing cycle of improvement. This is a systematic way to navigate the complexities of prompt design, where each cycle of testing and refinement helps fine-tune the LLM's performance to better meet your application's needs and make it more robust to use in new scenarios. Another best practice is keeping a version history of your prompts. That way, if a new version performs worse, you can quickly roll back. Document what prompts worked, what outputs were, and why you made each change. Over time, this archive becomes an invaluable cheat sheet for designing effective prompts. Once you've fine-tuned your prompts through trial, error, and a fair bit of cursing at uncooperative LLM responses, the next challenge is making them consistently reliable across an entire organization. Fortunately, you don't need to spend your days copying these manually. Tools like ChatGPTs, Custom GPTs, or Gemini's Gems allow you to lock in your best prompts, ensuring your whole team benefits from your hard-earned prompting expertise. Custom GPTs act as personalized versions of ChatGPT tailored to your company's workflows, brand voice, or proprietary datasets, no coding required. Instead of feeding the model the same instructions every time or repeatedly uploading reference materials, you can bake these elements into a reusable system. Many chatbots also allow creation of projects to more easily organize your prompts and in some cases to share them. Just a heads up, you will need a ChatGPT paid subscription to create custom GPTs. Take Moderna, for example. Since early 2023, they rolled out ChatGPT Enterprise across thousands of employees, building an internal library of specialized GPTs tailored for everything from regulatory compliance to translating complex biotech jargon into investor-friendly language. Their Dose ID GPT, for instance, helps clinical teams analyze data for dosing decisions by referencing proprietary datasets, generating well-sided visualizations, and supporting expert judgment. The impact? In just two months, Moderna created 750 custom GPTs with 30% of weekly active users contributing their own. On average, each employee engages in about 120 ChatGPT enterprise conversations per week. Their structured approach, rigorous testing, AI-driven prompt evaluation, and careful iteration ensures that even as usage scales, 
quality and accuracy remain intact. Instead of AI becoming a quirky experiment stuck in one department, it's embedded across the company as a serious productivity multiplier. Now let's put all of this into practice ourselves and consider this scenario. We have Jessica, a financial analyst at an investment advisory firm, who spends her time summarizing quarterly earnings calls. Her managers want precision, clear financial guidance, and explicitly stated strategic risks. Let's see how she iterates on her prompts using the actual Q4 2024 earnings call from NVIDIA. Of course, she supplies the full transcript to the model. Otherwise, it will just make things up. She starts with a basic prompt like this one, to which ChatGPT responds something like this. Not bad, but it's also not that great. There's no forward-looking guidance, no specific risks, just a retrospective recap. Jessica brings in more of her own expertise to make a more specific prompt by explicitly saying to focus on management's specific numeric guidance for net income and risks for the next quarter. Now, the new ChatGPT response looks like this. To evaluate this response more rigorously, Jessica then employs the LLM as a judge method, switching to Claude again with transcript in hand to assess accuracy and completeness. She uses a new prompt to ask Claude to evaluate a previous response on accuracy, clarity, completeness, and executive level readability with this prompt. And she gets this answer. Claude's structured feedback highlighted a significant hallucination issue, fabricating net income guidance. It even explains why. No actual guidance was ever provided for this figure during the call. She does a quick control F in the transcripts and she finds out Claude is indeed right. This simple example highlights the importance of careful prompt phrasing when you don't know exactly what information the model has access to. This mistake may have been very difficult and time-consuming to check for and to identify manually, which we still encourage you to do if you can, or at least the same way Jessica did. With the feedback that net income guidance simply doesn't exist, Jessica zeroes in on rephrasing to ensure she doesn't request too specific details that may not exist. And this time, no hallucinations and just a really valuable answer. Instead of fabricating net income figures, the model sticks to actual guidance, revenue projections, margin commentary, a clear growth driver, and an explicit risk from the call. But Jessica isn't done yet. If she wants a generalizable prompt that works across all of the 30 companies she looks at each quarter, she will need to stress test it much further. What happens if a company skips guidance altogether? Will the model invent numbers again? she will likely also bring in more of the prompt techniques we thought already, such as few shot prompting or chain of thought, with more directions based on what she evaluates over all the 30 companies. The good news is she doesn't have to manually test all of this. LLM as a judge allow her to scale evaluation, ensuring that over time, she develops a rock-solid prompt. She also logs every iteration, so when earnings season rolls around again, she isn't starting from scratch. Unfortunately, real-world examples get much more complex than this study case. But the same process applies where it's much more valuable to clearly evaluate your prompts and results in a quantitative way to leverage LLMs properly. Prompt design isn't something you figure out once and forget about, especially if you are planning to use AI on a larger scale. It requires a structured, systematic approach and improvement over time through continuous testing, refinement, and evaluation. The coolest part is that AI itself can even help with this process, acting as an evaluator to speed up iteration and spot mistakes that wouldn't have been very hard to find yourself. I hope this video helped you understand a way you can experiment with LLMs in your day-to-day -day workflows or gave you some ideas on how to approach prompting in your next project. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.